Ready? Yep. So you want me to call Lyndon Johnson? Uh huh. Wasn't he Nixon's vice president? Um, I would think he was Kennedy's vice president. Oh, but I didn't read to that point yet. I'm still in his young years. Oh, because he was interesting, yes. Oh, uh, this is Lyndon Johnson. Welcome. Thank you for coming. How are you? Uh, very well. Who am I speaking to? Max. I'm Max. Max. Nice to meet you, Max. I'm reading your biography, listening to uh, the audio of your biography, and I'm still at your tech, uh, uh, Congress election, so I don't know what happened after that yet. No, I see. But uh, the early life of yours was very interesting, so I decided to invite you to meet him. And what would you like to ask? Uh, how much of alien influence was there? You seem to be like the person from the outer, not very human. Was, was um, there an alien personality? There, I think there probably was. I was unusually driven. I, I couldn't stop myself. I was, I felt like I couldn't stop. There was, I couldn't waste any time. I needed to be uh, somewhere more important than I was. And every place that I was, Congress or, or wherever, I felt like there was something better. There was something more I could do. Um, there was a higher place for me. I always felt that, and I was always driven by that, and it felt sort of unreal. I, I felt a sort of adrenaline rush about, about waking up every morning and doing something uh, different and better, and, and yes, I believe there was some alien influence, but they didn't let themselves be known until later in my life. Oh. Tell me more. What 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 happened later? Well, later when when I became the vice president, I realized that uh, there was uh, memos and information, little little pieces of memos and information. Hold on, hold on. But, you need to breathe. You need to breathe. Jim is out of air. I see. There was pieces of information and um, things about aliens. And I looked into that a little bit, but it seemed to be a little bit sketchy. But then after a couple years, I realized that uh, they had projects going and things that reported directly to the president that did not report to the vice president about these kinds of activities and the presence of these alien beings. And pro the Area 51, and there are other areas under Mount Shasta and uh, in North Carolina and a couple other places in a place in California right off the right off the coast under the uh, the underwater uh, base. There's an underwater base right off about where you are off San Diego somewhere. And it has a uh, alien. Uh, uh, influence as well. So you didn't meet aliens face I to did, face. I did see the. I did see pictures and I did see uh, evidences of it. Yes, but I did not meet them in person. Uh, there was a time that we were going to do that. That was part of an agenda at one time, but uh, then there was uh, some upheaval in the. Congress or Senate, and I, I never got to do it. But I did realize 
that they were around me. I didn't, I did know that. In the later part of, uh, when I was vice president, I did realize at that time that I was being helped by them. Although they did not show themselves to me, I could hear them sometimes. They would speak to me. And that was common practice in the White House. I talked to the president about it, and he had also said, yes, they were, they talked to him, and he actually had seen them. So, and I was, I questioned them on what they looked like, and we had an interesting conversation about it. But that was about the only time that I let it really soak in that they were influencing me in some way. Oh, so you had a voice-to-voice -voice conversation or it was telepathic? Oh, president, but I could hear them and they were in my room and I knew that there was a presence there, but I could not see it and it didn't speak to me that way. But uh, after a while, I, after I talked to the president, I realized that it was uh, aliens that were there because he said there were aliens around the White House in many places. So I knew that I had been uh, surrounded by them. Were they good ones or not so good of ones? Of course. They, they did not do anything harmful to me. In fact, they did help me. Like I said, from the early on, I felt a great drive much uh, a greater drive than anybody that I could think of uh, to succeed and to change things and to make things better. And I believe that was partially their influence. I was outside of the norm and I was outside of, actually I felt outside of the law many times. It, mm -hmm. it felt like I, I could do anything and it wouldn't, I, I would not, be in trouble for anything. Mm -hmm. um, did you have alien or hybrid body? Do you know that? Um, I certainly have people comment on my body. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I do not know if it was an alien body. I cannot tell you if that is true or not, but it was certainly an extraordinary body. You, you couldn't move well, but you were reasonably healthy and worked a lot. And Yes, and had the very true. It seemed like I, there was a lot of things very good about it and a lot of things very restrictive about it. But everything about who I was came together to help me push for the places I wanted to be. I think that if I had been more mobile... I would have been a very great sportsman. Uh, but since that was not the case, it really, I became a great speaker, a great uh, thinker, a great mover of, uh, I became very active in other ways. So uh, you had some sort of ability to read minds, right? And influence minds? A little bit, because I always could anticipate what, the, what they were saying. I knew what they were thinking and what they were, because, well, A, I had studied, I had studied what I was going to be talking about and what I was getting into. I knew everything about it. I knew everything about the politics of what I was going to do. So I know the thought processes behind it before I got there. And I knew what they were going to say because this is what they had been saying all along. And I also knew their counteractions were when for a rebuff. And I, I had the, all that figured out before I even got there. And I, I knew the people and their strengths and weaknesses and who to watch out for and who was the the dangerous ones that uh, cause the problems. I knew I did my homework. I did my homework. And so I was on top of it. And I, yes, I could anticipate some of the things they were saying. And that is why I prepared the way I did. I could actually head them off at the pass, so to speak. I would 
be ahead of them in their thought process and they couldn't come back and say, um, no, no, that's not right because I had it all figured out in the way that I could th figure it out and my logic was very sound and my, the, my expression was good. I was a good speaker, I was a good listener. I was a good listener and that told me exactly where they were going next with their part of the speech. It told me exactly where they were moving in their agenda. I listened very carefully of how they worded things because after a while when they deal with me, when they were dealing with me, they selected their words very carefully. And so I knew what they were trying to say without saying it. And so I was ahead of the game on that as well. So I was very much uh, aware of who I was dealing with and how I was dealing with them. And it would seem that I had some psychic energy or uh, psychic powers and could read their mind. But basically, it was all about preparation. I was very prepared. Mm -hmm. So do you think you had um, a born in talents from past lives? I think that I, you know, I never really thought of it that way. I never really, I was very third dimensional in many, many ways. Uh, I, I enjoyed the third dimension quite a lot. And, and nobody, uh, and when they brought up things of that nature, I was really dealing with some very backwards kinds of thought processes. And so no one really brought that kind of thing thinking to the forefront too often, maybe after I was in the White House occasionally, but before that it was all, I dealt with the South a lot and I dealt with the backward uh, laws that w were in effect at those times and tried to change them as much as possible to bring about a better way of life for the people. So in the beginning, I did not uh, think about past life regressions. I did not think about lives before that because I was too involved in changing the future and doing what was right for the moment and satisfying myself. Actually, I, I was very, uh, I had a good ego. <laughs> I was pretty egotistical then. So I would say that I was doing everything for me. And uh, I was doing things for the, the country and for the state and for the county, but it was all reflecting back to me as a hero. I would be the hero and they would move me forward. But now from the place where you are, can you tell which past life you were or is it? Oh yeah, there was a couple past lives where I had some uh, very prominent leadership positions in the Roman Empire. Um, I was uh, in the uh, Senate there, and I uh, had a lot to do with uh, laws, rules, regulations, and I worked with Caesar. I worked with other um, emperors as well. I also was a in the Greek philosophy era with uh, uh, some of those. I, I was somewhat prominent there too, but I do not remember the name uh, right off the top of my head, but I was. That's all right. Uh, it started with an H, like Herocious or something of that nature. But I was very good and in, big into uh, physicianship and uh poetry and writing and things of that nature. But my main thought process was government and with uh, the way that the people were being treated, etc. So oh. yes, I had some prominent, prominent past lives before I reached this one. So uh, looking at your path, you know, the one which I know so far, it looks like you have been guided, uh, like you were born into a family of talented politician, Yes. Uh, your mother was um, a great guide for you uh, for yes. a big part of your life. And Absolutely. you yes. were lucky many times. Like you were, first you were uh, 
driven through lots of failures. So you had a lot of experience that you later used in your, like your failures were driving you later. And then you had a lot of successes which were very unlikely. So it looks like yeah. like uh, the spirit was guiding you a lot. So what was your mission there? And oh. um, well, first of all, with the, I would like to talk about the failures for a mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. The failures. Uh, fortunately, my mother was very good at dealing with a failure of other people's failure, and she was so helpful by uh, putting and letting me know that those failures were not a bad thing. It was meant to fail because I needed to learn this or that or the other thing. She knew exactly what lesson was to be learned by those failures and would talk to me about them and was a very, very good counselor. And so instead of being depressed or let them all uh, crush me, it made me even more... Um, willing to try again. It made me even more driven in the sense that I, I knew that there would be successes. And the reason there was successes were not because it was um, likely to be an excess, but my attitude toward becoming and doing the work was a very big plus. And people turned their thought processes toward unlikely thought scenarios and political scenarios because they saw my drive and determination and my positivity toward what this would do. And it was not likely that some of these things would come to pass. But when I did have a success, I went back to my mother and she would say, now don't let this go to your head. Now don't let this be this or that or the other thing. My mother was right on about how to direct me and she knew exactly when and how to do it. She would not call me and lecture me on the phone, but when we got together for holidays or things of that nature, we'd always sit and have a nice chat about the family and things and all of a sudden it would turn to politics. So she was really very astute she followed my successes and failures with a great uh, amount of detail and understanding. Uh, do you see the spiritual guidance there? Was there a mission? Oh, there was definitely. She was a very spiritual woman. And um, the, now, wait a I, second. I was asking about spiritual guidance from outside of the field. Oh, yes. World. There was spiritual guidance outside. And she uh, spoke about that to me. But I gained um, some of that spiritual guidance by being true to myself. And I did pray uh, for it. I did pray for guidance, although I was very arrogant at times. And I just what didn't realize that how arrogant I was at some of those early moments but I did pray for guidance and I did pray that I was doing the right thing. And there was a lot of guidance and I, I knew that spirit was with me. Yes. I didn't know that. Uh, do you know the mission? Did I know my mission? Yeah. My mission was to get as high into the government as possible because I knew that I could make a difference. That was the mission that was before me. I knew that I was going to be successful because not only was I well liked after a while, but I became very manipulative or I became very persuasive. Let's put it that way. I became persuasive in government matters and people would listen when I spoke. And that wasn't the right, that wasn't the same at the beginning. I mean, when I had those failures, it wasn't the same then, but I learned a great deal from those and was able to lift myself out of those and become a persuasive speaker because those early days of speaking and acting, I was, I was a little bit backwards, just a little, 
not terribly so, but I did not know, I did not have the confidence that I needed for the future. And that's where I gained it, is uh, getting through those and telling people, it doesn't matter. I am, I can see why that failed and I can see why this next thing will succeed. So I, I was very positive. Uh, that's, I see in your biography a couple of times when you really were crushed in the young years and after yes. that you became really uh, cynical and hypocritical. At the first, yes. Was there some sort of a contract with negative energies? With uh, No, it was spirits? a third dimensional thing. It was how, how immature young men act at that age. Um, and that's another time when my mother got a hold of me. And uh, she didn't do very much good at that time because I, I was being a hypocrite, like you said. I was uh, not following my own dreams and I wasn't following, I was just getting what I needed and being sort of arrogant and things of that nature. But uh, it did change. Yeah, I really like, I actually cried when I read your experience with, um, with being a teacher. Like, Teaching is an incredibly difficult job, but it is also incredibly rewarding if it's done correctly. Apparently you, you love children. I did and still do. Uh -huh. Children, well, like I had said many times, children are the future and you have to bring them up correctly and you have to know how to, how to talk to them. So, yes. What, what about your sexuality? You like, you hugged everyone, kissed everyone, and, and that kind of opened a lot of doors. Yes, I sort of, all right. Well, I didn't know you were going to bring that up, but there was sort of a bisexuality there in some ways. I, I was attracted to men and more to women. I was much more attracted to women, but there was an occasional man that I was attracted to. And there were those in the government that I loved that, that stood firm and, and I was a hugger. I, I, liked, I liked to kiss people and I liked to hug people. And yes, it was well noted that there were some moments where it seemed an inappropriate, but I did it anyway. Um, again, there was like, I see the alien influence here. Uh, but um, yes, I, you know, as I am in spirit and look back to this time, I take on this person persona as I reach into this life uh -huh. and, I, and I can see differently from the spiritual realm what was going on with this life of Lyndon Johnson, as, he, as I was called then. And it was a very unusual life. And it was a very, uh, it was guided in some ways by outside forces. I do see that. I do see that. Um, but at the time, it was hard to see it because those were not the kinds of things that you would think about. But mm -hmm. from this perspective, I do see it. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, also, apparently, you were. Um very talented in playing the role of, of a son to many prominent people. Oh, yes. Well, they like that. It was a, a place of manipulation. I had control. You see, they thought they had control because they were the daddy. They were the father. Mm -hmm. But yet, the son was saying, Daddy, could you do this for me? Uh, could you do that for me? Can you help me with this? Can you? And that relationship, father-son kind of thing, gets you very far because the father will do almost anything for his son when he sees the loyalty of the, of the son. But was there anything um, in your design different? Like, were your, was it only invented or was there, was there something 
in oh, you by no, nature. There true. There's some truth in it. I did respect these men. Mm -hmm. I did love them for who they were and how they run and conducted themselves. So yes, there was some forms of sincerity in there, but I also knew that it could be used in my favor. But I did very much indeed like these people and very much indeed did not do anything to hurt them. But I only used them to get me where I needed to go without uh, hurting them, tramping, tramping on them or uh, using them in a negative way. Uh, only positively because I did respect them and love them very much. Uh, I'm recording this. Do you mind it being published or is it? Okay oh, no. To... If you would like to publish this, well, if you think that it's worthwhile. Mm, thank you. I didn't read further biography, so I'll have more questions later. Right now, I will stop the recording and yes. ask one more question. Yes. But what, 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 when I read your, your, your story, it looks like what I'm missing in my life, like um, durability and ability to work hard without big health consequences and uh, ability to work with, uh, within the system. I, I miss it completely. Yes. I was able to work in the system because, like I said, homework, homework, homework. You understand how each situation is going to go in a way because you know the people that are in that situation. You get to know the people, how they act, how they voted, where their stand on every subject is, or most subjects, especially the ones you know that you're going to be talking about at that time. You know, you see in politics, I can look ahead, they have a public record of how they voted, who they are, what their emotions are, what they said in public. So I can see that, read that, know that, and formulate a thought process that is perhaps next to theirs or parallel to theirs, but yet goes beyond theirs and actually opposes theirs eventually in the future. So you have to understand, you have to get along, move along, and then after that person is in the, in the background or you've overcome their thought processes and their politics, you can move forward with your own. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So the, my uh -huh. strategy in the in the mid mid to later years, because I saw that I was popular with the older politicians. I was, and I was also popular with uh, many of the younger ones because they respected my um, the way that I did things and the way that I didn't really. I, I didn't shut people down so much toward the middle and end, but I went along with them to a certain point until I had to disagree with them. But I would always disagree in a way that made them not look like a bad guy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but made them look like perhaps it's time to move forward. Perhaps your thought processes are a little outdated. And let's move, let's, can you give that some thought? Can you give that some thought? Yes, it's <laughs> always best. Now, let me tell you what you can get from that. Mm -hmm. You can get how they think and how they work. If they're a strong personality, if they're a weak personality, if they can be, if they can be led or if they are only leaders, if, if, you, if they like only followers to be around them, then you have to learn how to follow properly so that you can manipulate the leadership portion. Because a follower, a great follower is also a great leader. Let mm -hmm. me explain that. Mm -hmm. I learned as I followed all the techniques that the leaders had. And so as I learned as a follower, 
about all the techniques the leaders had, I became a great leader when I had to be. I learned those techniques and the ones that fit with me, the ones that resonated with me, and the way that I could use them to my benefit. That's what you have to do. You have to learn about the leaders and the followers, and you have to learn where you are in that crowd. I'm a leader over this group, but I'm a follower under this group. So then you can work your way up by learning how to be the leader that you're, uh, follow the leader and become the leader that you're following. So in some way, because you do have to, uh, as you move through government, as you move through politics, you do have to uh, fit in. Unfortunately, that is part of what is. And I was not always the most upstanding person, uh, always, because sometimes I would fit in even when I didn't think it was the right thing because it was the right thing to get me where I needed to go to the next step so that I could do the right thing. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I didn't always do the right thing, but I had the goal of doing the right thing or having the right outcome in the end. Mm -hmm. Did you achieve it? Yes, of course. Most of the time, not always. There was a few leaders that were just a little too sharp. A little too sharp. But then I would back off a little bit and go, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on your toes. Uh, you know, a little bit of uh, damage control is necessary for those that are really... But you see, once you're friends to a point, uh, they do forgive. They will forgive those times where you have become a little bit too ambitious. And they will say, ho, oh, ho, oh, I was a little bit like that myself. Or and they will read into it something personal that, but they know the way that I handle it, they, the way that I did what I did, it was not personal against them. So they could always forgive it to a certain extent. It was never a slap on the face for them. It was more like I was trying to follow in their footsteps and become better at what they did than they were. So mm -hmm. I always saw it as sort of a, a backhanded compliment if, if I did uh, step on their toes at all. Thank you. Uh, my time is um, asking, uh, requiring that I move to the next um, speaker. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, it's fun talking. Thank you. I do like talking. That was <laughs> one of my fortes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I, 